All right. I'm going to hold off on scenarios until next class. It actually is really, really quick. So that we can go ahead and do our exercise. Yay. I know you're not cheering now. You'll be so happy by the time you get to assignment four and get to your final exam. Love this type of question on the final exam. Try not to look so excited. All right, so this is what we're going to do. I have two different scenarios. We're going to go through each scenario one at a time. In the first column, I have all your different persona types listed. And, because I didn't want to torture you too much, I included a description of what those persona types are. So, what your job is going to be is I'm going to describe the scenario to you, and then you guys get to figure out and tell me who might the primary persona be, who might the secondary persona be, supplemental, customer serve, negative, so on and so forth, for each scenario. Now, one of the questions I am very often asked is, especially after I describe the scenario, is there one set confirmed correct answer? What do you think the answer to that is? No, because we are still defining the product. So, I want you to think about that. When you are thinking about who your personas are, you do need to think about how are you visualizing this product? Because that's also going to determine who your other personas are. All right, you ready? I have to look so excited. All right, so here's our first scenario. You have your own business, and there is a company that you have just signed a contract with where they want you to develop some software for them. So the software that they want you to develop is contract software, in other words, software that can be used to manage their contracts. And it just so happens that the organization you have this contract with for whom you are going to be developing this product is a small nonprofit agency. Let me emphasize small nonprofit. Cheap. <laughs> well, cheap, yeah. Do nonprofits have a lot of money if they're small? Not usually. Now, I also want you to think about that. They don't have a lot of money. Do you think they have a lot of employees? Probably not. Do you think that's going to have an effect on how you should design this product? Absolutely. All right, so think about it for a few minutes. So you are designing a product. You're designing some software to help this small nonprofit manage their contracts. Who do you think the primary persona is going to be? I didn't hear you. Which employee? Accountant. An accountant? Could be an accountant, right? It's a small nonprofit. People wear multiple hats, so there are accountants that certainly are the ones who also manage the contracts, right? Okay, yes, I can type. Okay, I'm going to give up. Okay, so we have our accountant. Well, as our primary persona, let's start there. Is there anyone else that you can think of that might be a primary persona? Whoever is in charge of marketing. So your marketing salesperson could also be your contract manager. Right? So marketing sales contract. All right. It could be, well, a legal assistant or an administrator. Okay, most nonprofits don't have someone like that. But I actually do know a few that do. They particularly focus on the law, though. Okay. Um, so it is certainly, certainly possible. So they do like legal aid, and they actually have someone like that. So it could be, you know, a, or it could be even, you know, an administrative assistant, legal aid, something like that. All right, so let's jump back to our accountant. If our accountant is our primary persona, 
who might be a secondary persona? The other employees? I'm sorry? The other employees? Which other employees? Um, you want to be specific? Anyone? That was a small nonprofit. We wear multiple hats. Who else might be interested in? The bosses. The bosses. So the CEO, for example, I know it sounds very big and fancy, the CEO of that small nonprofit, because I know it's a fancy title, but small nonprofits also have CEOs or, or directors. They don't make much money, like the multi bazillion dollar corporate, corporate CEOs. So if you look at a CEO, your accountant is your primary persona. Your CEO is your secondary persona. Because the CEO may, in fact, need to go and, you know, they may get a, a call from someone they have a contract with. The accountant's not there. You know, they have, you know, five whole employees in this whole organization. Do you think the CEO is going to be, oh, I'm too good for that? Yeah, no. Is there anything else? What is the additional capability a CEO may need? To be able to I'm sorry? The CEO would need to be able to use it and modify it. Do you think the, the accountant would need to be able to use it and modify it? So what additional thing do you think a CEO might need to be able to do? Override it. Or like override, a little more specific. Override whatever the accountant does? Actually, that may be true. You're supposed to keep track of that. Keep track of that in your database. Approve or reject. Approve or reject. So it may be that the CEO needs to approve, you know, let's say on a weekly basis, approve or reject any new contracts. So that's a great example. May need to be able to have more higher level reports than the accountant. Make sense? Yes, maybe. Any other secondary personas you can think of? No? Nope. Okay, we'll go to the next one, because then in our second pass you get to do the marketing sales contract. Supplemental personas. Can you think of any supplemental personas? Is there a person that like writes the grounds? Other yes, there are, there's a grant writer. It could be that they have a grant writer. So the supplemental persona could certainly be the grant writer. The grant writer would need to know about the current contracts and the types of contracts that they have. They may not need all of the functions that the primary persona needs, but all the functions that the primary persona needs the grant writer will be covered by those. So the grant writer may not have to input confirmation, you know, like say, you know, confirmation of the grant of the contract being received by the, per the entity that you're going to be contracting with, but they may need to know that it's been received. Make sense? So that's a great example. Grant writers are very important to nonprofits and to the university, actually. University is a non-profit, in case you didn't know. Anyone else? That was a great example. Supplemental personas are not always easy to come up with. And you do not always have supplemental personas. You may not have any. Although on assignment four, I want you to put a, a supplemental persona. All right, customer persona. If your primary persona is the accountant, who do you think the customer persona might be? It could be the CEO, right? It may be that the CEO is the one who has the only authority to say, yes, we are going to purchase this, I'm going to approve it. Remember, it's a small nonprofit. 
Anyone else? It could be the accountant also. It could be the accountant is the one. You know, they may, it may be that they're the primary persona and they're going to be the one using it, so they are the ones who get to choose it. That happens. Anyone else? Do you think it's possible that it may not be, say, just one person but multiple people? That is also possible. Makes it a little bit more difficult when you're when it comes to creating a persona, but that is something you would want to think about. All right. Anyone else? Is someone who is a client of the nonprofit are they a customer? No. In this case, they are not. Served persona. Who might be a served persona? The client. So, so a client from, for this nonprofit is not going to be using their contracts management software. But do you think they are affected by it? Absolutely. They will be affected by it. Make sense? Yes? No, maybe? Most of you are so quiet. Okay, let's jump to the negative persona. Oh, are you sure? The, the grant it, it depends on, that's one of the answers where it depends on how you are envisioning the software. And that would be really, really important to be explicit about. Because if you are going to be designing something that only the accounting department can access, that other employees, say the uh, program managers, cannot, that is very important in terms of your scope. That's a little bit more difficult than saying something like, well, the janitor or the security guard. But it's a really important thing to think about because it can make a big difference in your product and the scope of your product. So you can put something like, you said, what, security guard? And then you can say another employee, like program manager, depends. Unless they're like covered by the contracts somewhere. Right, right. Um, you know, so it could be that they're, they're served. Right. It's possible. It depends on how, but on what the structure is. Yes. Okay. So, with negative personas, with negative personas, it's who is not the target of the design. So it could be like the security guard, because nonprofits usually don't hire security guards, even if they're in a building. You know, the building owner is the one who hires the security guard. Or even, you know, the, the, the janitor. I'm sorry, I don't remember what the PC name is these days. Does anyone remember? The, the people who come clean your office? Custodian. Thank you. Custodian. I think janitor kind of implies it's male. Custodian could be either gender. I know, I'm so, I'm so horrible. I know these things. You should use stereotypes. I, I should not use stereotypes. Absolutely. That's right. But didn't I tell you it's easy to fall into it? Yep. See, I was testing you because I never fall into it. <laughs> All right, so with a negative persona, a negative persona you really want to use to make sure that you are very clear about your scope. So if you say something like another employee, another specific employee like a program manager, um, it's going to depend on how you are envisioning or your client is envisioning that that product is going to be used um, as to whether they are a negative persona or not. Now, chances are that another employee in this case would not be a negative persona, but I can also think of some exceptions where 
it would be. But it's, re it's really important to be clear about that when it comes to the scope of the project. Because if you're designing a product that is only going to be used by one particular department, it's not as complex as if you are designing something that's going to be used by multiple departments. Does that make sense? Kind of, sort of? Okay. So think of it, more people, more departments, more complexity. And if you are working within a budget, you need to make sure you stay within that budget. You need to make sure you stay and understand the scope. Yes? Not to like bore you. Is there like any way you can maybe give an example that's more like relatable? That's more clear? Because like for example, like a company, I'm not very familiar with like a company structures. So. Oh, okay. Um, so let's see. You could also think of, let me think. For example, like software for teachers and for students. It's designed more for teachers so students would be negative. Well, the students would be served yeah, exactly. in, in, in that case. But you can then say um, a negative could be like the parent. Now, it could be the case that you design something that the parents can also access that does exist, but that would be a very important thing to distinguish. So if it's, you know, if it's only for the teachers, the, kid, you know, the kids would be served. The parents then could be negative so that you can say, oh, I want this functionality for parents. Oh, they're not part of the scope. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. What time is it? All right, so we can do one of two things. We can now start talking about our marketing sales or contract person as the primary persona, or we can start on scenario two. Okay, how about if we vote? You don't have to tell me, just put your arms up. Who wants to go on to scenario two? <laughs> Almost everybody. Is there anyone who wants to go through scenario one again with our marketing sales contract? Person. Someone who I think either was stretch, almost stretching or almost putting your hand up? All right, we'll go to scenario two, and then if you want, we can go back and do scenario one again. All right, here is scenario two. You are again. A consultant, you have your own company, you are going to be designing a product for another organization. In this case, this is an outdoor only landscaping company. So they don't go into buildings and water your plants. They only do landscaping outside in the fresh air. What they want, they want you to create a product for online scheduling by their clients. You guys got it? All right. 